Wednesday 1 at Barnsley, 3-0. Your commentator then for this return bout, Martin Tyler. So Sheffield Wednesday come out fourth in the third division and taking into this match an unbeaten run in their last seven games. Hillsborough today then playing host to an occasion which typifies the intense rivalry in South Yorkshire in the third division. And into the pressure of this local derby steps Peter Springett, once of course a stalwart in the Wednesday goal, but now recalled by Barnsley for his first senior match of the season. In front of Springett is Norman Hunter, who finally made his league debut for Barnsley last Saturday, much delayed of course because of that ankle operation. Barnsley are also without the injured Phil Chambers, so John Collins, who also had a spell here at Hillsborough, returns at left back. And at number 11 is Graham Pugh, of course a third former Wednesday player, the club he represented in the 1966 FA Cup final. Ian Fleming wears the Wednesday number 7 shirt today in place of the injured Roger Wilde, linking up an attack with Terry Curran, who has augmented his direct running with nine goals already this season. It's a sign of the bigger first-team pool Jack Charlton has assembled this season that he can name a strong side, even though five players of the first-team are injured. Roger Wilde, who has to sit out this afternoon's derby occasion with a cracked bone in the foot, which will keep him out for about a fortnight. Today's referee, Maurice Robinson from Sutton Coalfield, refereeing at Hillsborough for the first time. And Barnsley attacked the goal to the left in the first half in the plain strip. Red shirts and black shorts. And here's Mike Lester, a new acquisition for them in midfield from Grimsby. Barnsley have only won one of their last eight league games. Jeff Johnson with the throw for Wednesday. A push on Curran by Ian Banks. And Lester also tangling with Curran. Wednesday, who over the last year or so have had one or two problems here at Hillsborough, putting together consistent performances. They haven't been beaten at home in their last five matches. And Curran again, the recipient of a harsh tackle from Banks. And Banks is only 18. Johnson in towards Jeff King. Few getting there before Porterfield. Away from Glavin. Is King. The blocking from Ronnie Glavin. And put behind for the first corner by Collins. So the first test for Peter Springett. Porterfield will curve it in with his left foot. Grant has come forward from the back. And it was skidding off Fleming's head. And a goal kick. <laughs> Peter Springett, 33 years old. And at the other end, Brian Cox still only 18, who used to watch Springett play as a youngster. Riley, Clark behind him, watched by Smith. <laughs> Barnsley with plenty of support here. Most of it massed behind the goal that Barnsley are attacking in this first half. Banks waiting on the far post good handling from Cox Not the ball for the goalkeeper really driven fiercely by Ian Banks he found the ball breaking for him close to the goal line with a chance to cut it back and he really drove it firmly and Cox was down well the handling was good here's Fleming who was pushing 
Fleming, who was signed last February from Aberdeen for £40,000, but in his very first game lasted only 35 minutes before he injured a knee, which kept him out for quite a while, and he's not yet really established himself as a regular in the Wednesday side. penalty area touch back for Glavin and King is out far too quickly must admit Barnsley have delayed the taking of it so everyone back for Sheffield Wednesday Leicester has Glavin number four and Flavel is the other Barnsley player to touch it to it goes for Glavin the charge of striped-shirted players. But it was wide of the post. It's touched to him by Mike Lester. The cops surely would not have seen it. Barnsley dropping off Mark Smith. And settling for dealing with the cross when it came. Fleming making contact as he was falling. Going away to King. Trying to take on Hunto. Wasn't fooled at all by the body swerve. the threat at the moment and it's a goal kick and Norman Hunter well, Barnsley rather caught out as indeed I was by the gesture of the linesman who seemed clearly to be pointing for a goal kick and Hunter we thought it was a goal kick as well blocked the free kick which was the way the referee saw the situation and is getting the yellow card for it Hunter in the end penalised for blocking King over by the corner flag and then stopping the free kick being taken and Hunter gets the uh, yellow card he went to block King as he tried to take the free kick Touched on by Riley. Not trying to make something of it. Pushing by McCarthy. Wednesday still in possession. Here's Johnson. Looking towards Fleming. Again side flag that thwarts Wednesday Fleming trying to check away from the back defender make some space for the deep cross but got himself caught offside O'Reilly back for Clark banks and a lot of space to Clark left there by Glavin. No real height for an orthodox cross in the Barnsley attack. And here's Collins. Glavin, nice turn. That's the second chance. And Wednesday finding numbers the best way of stopping that attack. Here's Curran. King. Or Fleming. Hunter with him. The ball rolled free. And he was able to knock it to safety out of play. Here's King. Oh, he raised on the far post. Tripped by Banks. Looks like the yellow card again. I think that for persistent infringements by Ian Banks. 
several free kicks. And he brings down Jeff King. And that tackle earns him the yellow card. Free kick when the Barnsley wall is back the full ten yards, just two men. Grant. And the header from Mullen drops over. Jimmy Mullen, I think the only player in this Sheffield Wednesday side who played for Wednesday with Peter Springett, nearly beating his former teammate. When the free kick was played in deep, it was well turned back there by Grant. And Mullen, it wasn't an easy header for him, and he couldn't quite keep it down. And there is the half-time whistle at the end of a tight first half, in which really Barnsley have more to be pleased with as the players go off. They've contained Sheffield Wednesday well, and Peter Springett so far, a safe and uneventful return to first-team duty. So half time here at Hillsborough, Sheffield Wednesday nil, Barnsley nil. So Sheffield Wednesday getting the second half underway here at Hillsborough. Looking, I'm sure, for more cohesion than they showed going forward in the first 45 minutes against the Barnsley side that defended well and occasionally broke promisingly themselves. A succession of free kicks not really helping the rhythm of the game. And nor a blustery wind. And that's the wind that might trouble Peter Springett. In the end, the ball with enough velocity to drop behind. Jeff King there wearing a slightly different pattern to the rest of the Sheffield Wednesday players in terms of the stripes on his shirt. I understand it's a personal preference. Smith and Clark tussling and it's a Barnsley free kick. Banks way in the far touchline. Goes against Jeff Johnson. As well, is Glavin. And Banks in on the right foot, which is not his stronger foot. Barnsley, who are playing with the wind in the second half, has to create more up front. Banks was stretching as he that shot across the face of the goal. Fleming. There's Lowy. Curran. Get up ahead of steam and stopped by Collins. Barnsley go in front, and there's a booking 
for Terry Curran. Who has been in trouble with the referees this season, presumably for a word out of place. And the subject of the goal. So it's the Barnsley supporters who find their voice. Here's Johnson. Blocked by Hunter, put out by Collins. Here's Lowy, and Curran. And Barnsley somehow muddle it behind. Always oh, a dangerous time when you just scored a goal. The situation does waver. Barnsley must be the most intent now. Riley gets it out. Cross, but King won't quite make it. And Barnsley have found the way points and away goals so difficult to come by this season. Glavin waiting for the pullback, and he doesn't need it. It's gone in off Grant. As Leicester takes a bow, Grant extricates himself from the net. It's Glavin who sent Leicester away. He was forced wide by the strength in the pass, but he got round Cox. Hit it for goal. 
goal and Grant couldn't keep it out. So, a real body blow struck by Barnsley at the start of the second half. They lead by two goals to nil. With only nine minutes of the second half gone.
Abin. No chances will be taken. Pass from the halfway line. Contact. Yeah. Inevitably backs there to make sure that 
Curran can't claim possession. joining in too, here's Pugh, looking for, curling it inside the far post, which really would have iced Barnsley's cake. Clavin, who'd done all the running, he was pulling it back initially for Leicester, Pugh was looking for a gap he saw inside that far post. a long serving player Porterfield we just haven't found a way around Norman Hunter Riley all on his back we're into injury time Barnsley will be happy to see it down in that corner Wednesday will want to get it forward Here's Banks. 
who's played such a valuable part for Barnsley in a strong team performance. Which brings them two precious points and a lot of local pride as well. A performance really built on the rock that today was Norman Hunter. And he deserves to raise his fists in triumph because around his example at the back, Barnsley built a team performance that Sheffield Wednesday couldn't master. Wednesday, who have struggled to put things together at home and who were beaten on the day by goals in the second half. As Peter Springett comes off in triumph, a clean sheet on his return to the first team and the return to his former club. The goals from Glenn Riley and Mike Lester really fashioned on the break, but Barnsley never really in any great trouble at the back. And Alan Clark, an afternoon to thoroughly enjoy. The final score at Hillsborough, Sheffield Wednesday nil, Barnsley 2. So then, a bad first half for Barnsley in which they collected three bookings, but it all came good for them, of course, in the second half with two well-taken goals, and those two goals certainly eased the pressure on them. For Wednesday, really, a bad day all round. It won't be any consolation for them to have realised had they won this match, they'd have moved up to third place in the table. As it is, they move down now to fifth place. Well, with me now, two of the main reasons why Barnsley did indeed win the match, Norman Hunter and with him, Peter Springett. Norman, first of all, well played. How did it feel to beat Jack Charlton? Well, I was uh, waiting after the game to have a chat to him, but uh, I haven't seen him. It was uh, a good feeling because it's my first derby for Barnsley, and uh, I thought we'd done extremely well. I thought we deserved with two points. A sort of belated birthday celebration for you, really, wasn't it? 36, was it, last month, Norman? 36 uh, last Monday. I went out the road at, down to Bristol, so the lads wouldn't give me any stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look a pretty good 36 to me, I'll tell you. Uh, what about Peter Springett? Peter, how did it feel to be back for you at Hillsborough? I must admit, I never ever wanted a player again, really. I've no, uh, no hard feelings about the place, but I never ever really wanted a player again. Really? No, no, uh, no ambitions to ever play. Really. But having come back, of course, a very satisfying kind of result to come back with. Oh, we battled well. I think we deserved it in the end. Yeah, we tr we tried really hard. It was a game of two halves, wasn't it? Really, it was a very doer first yes. half, but the second half very much the the kind of match that local derbies are made of. Well, we changed round and we we had the wind in the second half and. Uh, as you see by one of the goals, Peter could kick the ball a lot farther and we could push up a bit from the back. And uh, Well, I tell you what, let's take a look at that first goal, four minutes into the second half, started by that man there, Peter Springett. Peter, talk us through it, will you? Well, as Norman says, we had the wind behind us second half and it was just a question of getting it as far as I could. The boss did well to flick it on. There he is. But it seems as though um, one of their lads could have cleared it and he just seemed to knock it straight up in the air, in the air like, and then Glyn, Glyn held it well. Riley, right, yeah. yeah. Stuck it in very well. But see, we had two lads following up, yeah, if anything yeah. had about them. See. So, um, either one of them could have put it in. Ronnie and Mick up there to support him. And he's quite pleased about it, isn't he? Oh, yeah, <laughs> he, looks, he, he looks delighted, yeah. doesn't he? And there's the governor, yeah. Alan Clark. It's not often we score away from home, see. <laughs> and, uh... That was a nice one. And Norman, the second goal was, was well taken too, Mike Lester's goal. Yes, what I can remember, uh, the ball went to Ronnie Glavin, who took it forward, and Mick made a run down the middle of the park. And I think they had tried to appeal for offside. But uh, Mick took it on, took it round the keeper, and he looked from where we were at a bad angle. But he'd done ever so well to uh, clip it back, and it uh, went in. Yeah. Peter, I'll tell you what, from my point of view, it seemed the real difference between the two teams was the fact that Barnsley seemed to really want to win the game more. Well, you, you seemed totally committed. We got humiliated at home in the first game. By Sheffield Although University. Although I didn't play, and probably, you know, some of the other players didn't play. Yeah. And I think we had a lot to prove that yeah. we, we can play. And I think it proved today that we can battle and we can play. Yeah. And what about yourself? You're, you're going to want to keep that goalkeeping uh, first team jersey now, aren't you? Well, I hope to be. I mean, I've had more comebacks than uh, I don't know who, but um, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't have a lot to do, and nor did their keeper, really. You know, we didn't really have a save between us all yeah. afternoon, so yeah. that's thanks to the back four and everybody yeah. else, you know. Norman, Trevor Aylock coming, of course, from Chelsea. I mean, the things are looking really bright for you now, aren't they? Yes, uh, things are looking quite good. Uh, it's good for competition, you know, it's good, good in the in the club that we've got people pushing for positions yeah. and uh, we've got this game under our belt so uh, who knows we can go on from here. 
Well played to you. Let's leave the last word with Peter Springett. Peter, I believe you weren't expecting to play in this match, and in fact, uh, you've got a party tonight with a lot of Sheffield Wednesday fans. Is that right? A great deal of Sheffield Wednesday fans. That's going to get on quite well. I've got it? a friend up from London who's like chairman of the London branch of the Sheffield Wednesday Sports Club. He's come up for the weekend, and uh, I said one of us would be upset tonight, <laughs> and uh, I'm afraid it's going to be him. Uh, I'm chuffed a bit, so. Well played, the pair of you. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Springett and Norman.